Aloha, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul connecting with you live from Honolulu. It is a uh, Tuesday, that's what it is, and it's the 10th day of April. Coming up on tax season pretty soon here. And today, for those that are just tuning in, I'll be focusing on uh, a lo my title is very long have to stop and think about it <clears throat> but I'll be focusing on understanding the root cause of why when we hear something positive our mind our brain converts it into something negative a self-judgment or a criticism or what we hear is something that is negative when very often what is being spoken to us or about us is positive there's a reason for that and today that's what we're going to be focusing on so I encourage all of you to stick around for this live stream. If you can't, then just hit the uh, subscribe button and, uh, and also friend me, of course, and you'll be able to come back to my Facebook page and watch it in the future, of course, <clears throat> because after this recording, uh, then it goes on to the page. You can watch it again. I've got a friend of mine, Kristen Rojas, helps quite a bit, and what she's been doing is she has been posting my videos uh, onto YouTube and then posting those onto Facebook. So some of the things I've done from the past can be accessed that way as well. And of course, I do have a podcast, which I found helps a lot of people <coughs> to, uh, because some, some of us are pretty busy and on the go, just don't have time to, to sit down for a one hour live stream. Uh, probably wouldn't mind, but just don't have that kind of time. Whereas podcasts are ideal. So you can find those also by going to my website and, uh, uh, of course, the typical podcast uh, themes, iTunes and, and uh, uh, what is it, Stretcher, that's one of them. There's a couple of different ones out there that, that I belong to and stream through. <clears throat> so uh, you can access those. And those run about a week late, meaning after the week is over, then I download them from f Facebook, put them into podcast form, and then put them out there for listening again. So you have to be a little more patient on those. So let's see who's joined us here. Welcome Jack Poulton. Aloha Lisa Prado. Welcome Kristen Rojas. Welcome also to Karen Hogan and Jennifer Chris Smith. Aloha, welcome Lisa Patterson and Sharon Dodd. Welcome Sarah uh, Abernathy. Aloha Jamie Vargas. Aloha and welcome to Lorraine Norma Hayden. Monica, welcome. <coughs> also uh, Matthew Santi. Aloha Lorraine. And welcome also to Linda Martinez. <coughs> Let me drink some water here clear my throat. I had somebody comment the other day that, you know, I get into the meditations when you, when you um, are speaking and then you clear your throat and it breaks up my meditation. I, and she says, can't you find the mute button? I'm like, if I could find the mute button, trust me, I would push it because I know how disruptive that is. So I... Do apologize for any time I'm clearing my throat. <coughs> if I do, typically it's a I have to. Um, welcome, Magdalena Bladgeford as well. So today, for those that are just tuning in, I'll be focusing on uh, uh, up, uh, understanding the root cause of why when somebody's talking to us, in a positive tone, offering positive advice, suggestions, or wisdom, or whatever it might be, for some reason, we receive it as a negative as a something guilty, something maybe we have done wrong or uh, something like that. There's a root cause for that. And I'm going to be working with that a little bit today. Uh, the reason it came up was because I had a, a friend of mine who is a, a long-term student of Master Shah, uh, a person who is very talented actually, and uh, doesn't have enough trust for themselves and their abilities, doesn't trust the messages they hear, uh, or their own empowerments. <clears throat> and, um, but they're conscious enough to notice when these kinds of negative mindsets pop up. And they're conscious enough to notice that they're not, they're theirs, but they're not where they want to be and they're not quite sure why it pops up. And so, um, you know, I revealed to this person some of the roots and they're like, aha. And so the tools that I've given them to, to work with um, will help them if they apply it. And so I'll share some of those wisdoms with you today as well. 
Let's <clears throat> welcome also Kathy Arnold. Welcome Rosemarie Montanari. Let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, while we're waiting for a few more souls to join. We'll start by um, chanting the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony. <clears throat> Let us place our hands together. In soul light, soul service hand position, drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes and let us fully connect. And I'll invite in the beings of light. Welcome, Mina Sohota. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao and the source, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you, we honor you, respect you, and we ask most humbly, most sincerely for your presence and blessings today. <clears throat> Dear the soul of all the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, ascended masters, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu, beloved Lingwei Shangshir Kuan Yin, Beloved Medicine Buddha, beloved Happy Buddha, beloved Krishna, beloved Ganesha, and all other beings of light serving the planet of the light side. We love you all. We honor you all. Respect you all. And invite your presence in whatever way is most appropriate to assist us with this guidance, wisdom, and practice today. Dear the soul of the beloved Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, all of the stars, planets, galaxies, and universes of the light side, we love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate your blessings. We invite your presence and blessings today as well. We ask each of you, come at this time, bless us as we do our wisdom and practices, any blessings that we receive. We ask that you bless each and every one of us to clear our blockages in our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies so that we can be more and more present to our soul journey and soul perspective on each day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Dear the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. <clears throat> we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you. And we ask you to please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to come to join with us as we chant the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us chant together. For those that are new, this is a mantra, this is a blessing. It has been translated into over 40 languages, and if you follow Kristen Rojas' posts, she will help you to locate this song and download it for yourself and learn additional information. So let us chant to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xian er ling, wo ai tran ren ling. Wang li hing rong, er mu shi sheng, sheng ai ping, on a xie. Xiong ai ping on he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace. And harmony. <clears throat> Excuse me. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've had some more folks join. <clears throat> Welcome, Linda Martinez. Welcome, Magdalena Blatchford. Aloha, Christina Thorson. Aloha, and welcome, Teresa Darling and family. Welcome also to Lisa Patterson, Mina Sohota, Carmelita Trejillo. Welcome, Hui Lun. Welcome also to um, Joanna and Brenda. Welcome, Aspasia. Welcome, Shelly, Pat, and Jim. Aloha, Alicia Jade Kwan. <coughs> and welcome, Christina Bicole. Aloha, and welcome to Mandy Grewal. 
And if I missed your name, forgive me. Thank you so much for joining. So today's subject matter, as indicated earlier, is because I checked in with someone uh, this week, or should I say they checked in with me, and this person is a very beautiful soul. They do quite a bit of service. They have a lot of talents. Um, <clears throat> they have the ability to be very successful, actually. Uh, but they don't do a very good job of honoring themselves. They tend to do a lot of negative self-talk. And their ears tend to hear things negatively, even if it's positive words. And so I worked with this person, and I asked her a very simple question, because what was happening is this person was going off. Uh, welcome also to Susan Oderson. Welcome, Carol. Welcome, Ilona. And Lisa Zarniak. So this person was <coughs> spiraling, I guess is a good way to put it. And you can probably relate to that. You know, I don't know why. And da, 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 da. And fortunately, the, the reason this person called me, because they recognized that they knew that this mind process that they found themselves circling in was not where they wanted to be. And they, they, they caught that early on. They were able to recognize that it was inhibiting their future growth and their future health and well-being, mental emotional health and well-being and um, and they contacted me uh, because I'm considered a mentor for this person <clears throat> and uh, I'll give you an example so that when I give you the suggestion of what I said and why it will work for you uh, it works and so what was going on with this person was that they were in a class and they were receiving high, higher level wisdoms uh, what to do and what not to do in relationship to serving others on the spiritual journey uh, offering blessings uh, offering guidance etc there's do's and don'ts uh, in this in that process so that there's no stepping on people's boundaries things like that and also no overstepping with ego your own uh, capabilities <clears throat> and this person had been doing it a very good job. They had not been overstepping their boundaries. They had not been um, doing anything necessarily wrong. And yet, when they were in the class listening to the lead teacher talking about the do's and the don'ts, in their ear, they were hearing, you're not doing this right. You're doing this wrong. You should be doing this differently. That's what they were hearing. And it was almost like they had two voices in their head. One that heard the actual words that definitely was not saying that because they admitted it. And the other that heard this blame, blame, blame. So show of hands, how many people know that they're the kind of folks that receive information in a way that is self-degradating, um, guilt-oriented, um, uh, you know, my God, what did I do wrong now? What, you know, why is this person saying this about me? Um, anything like that. I want to see a show of hands. How many people have that kind of a, of a thing? Because what I have discovered uh, is that quite a bit of us do. We receive information, and very often the information that is being shared is not necessarily uh, how it's intended to be received. The way a person shares it is typically not intended to cause us suffering. That's pretty obvious if a person wants to cause you suffering. They're like, you are this, you are that. Okay, that's pretty pointed. Uh, but this is not like that. This is more like a positive statement. Think about doing it like this. <laughs> and yet we receive it with a very hurtful ear. And so the question becomes, why? That's why all of you have shown up today. Why? Why does this happen? And I have to sneeze, so wait a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Usually my sneezes come in two. We'll see if another one comes or not. So yeah, I see a couple of definitely thumbs up. Um, why do we do that? It's one of the hardest things to grasp. But work with me on this. Everything that we do, everything that we think has a methodology behind it, sometimes conscious, most of the time unconscious. Do you think 
your conscious, aware self would go, oh, please, speak positive to me. I want to receive it negatively, and I want to beat myself up. Do you think there's any part of you that thinks that's wise? Probably not. And yet it happens, and it happens almost uh, automatic. Why? A, an unconscious part of you has accepted as truth a piece of information from earlier in your life. <sighs> How do we discern what that piece of information is that makes it okay to convert something negative into self-blame, self-criticism, guilt, whatever it might be? Because that's exactly what happens when we receive this, these kinds of informations. We then convert it, put ourselves down, feel like somebody's putting us down, whatever it might be. So what I shared with this person that had this experience, I said, stop, 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 because she was spiraling down, you know, going into, I don't understand, complain mode, whatever it might be. I said, stop. And I said to them, in all the time that I've known you, there is one core underlying issue that if you take this one question I'm going to bring to you right now, I'm going to give you this very simple question that you have to ask yourself. If you continue to work with this one question again and again and again, especially each and every time you observe your mind, your ears, converting things into negative thoughts, converting things into self-judgment, self-criticism, whatever it might be, if you just worked with this one question every single time, by the end of resolving this, virtually every part of your life would be 100% better. Because the only reason this person ever gives me a call is that they get lost in the sauce. They get lost in the sauce of life beating them over the head. The, qu the thing that I told them to ask is, what is my payoff what is my payoff what on a subconscious level that I'm oblivious to that I am not aware of because I'm obviously doing this automatically what is the payoff of responding in this way of receiving in this manner of allowing myself to be the victim what is the payoff of going into a place of guilt. What is the payoff of receiving things with a negative ear? The one sentence that everyone needs to be asking themselves is, what is the payoff? <sighs> now this is gonna be like, what? For a lot of you, like, what, really? There's a payoff? Here's what you need to understand. From the moment from the moment we uh, get hurt as a child, from the moment we, because as children, remember, we're open hearts, loving, da, 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 I'm just a beautiful open child, da, da, da. And then somebody hurts us. They yell at us, or maybe we're shocked, our system gets shocked from the parents yelling at each other in our presence. But as from, from birth on, we learn to protect ourselves we protect the way we respond because people will bark back at us if we respond a certain way so we've learned to respond in a certain manner we protect um, in a lot of ways to feel I see people say no payoff I beg to differ every time there's a payoff stay with me when we um, when we grow up into some of the belief systems that are out there, the various religious systems, some of them put us instantly in the sinner category. You are a sinner, you are insufficient, you are uh, lower than, unworthy, etc., etc. Okay? If that's where your belief system's at, I'm not trying to change it. You may be welcome to stay there. But what's the payoff? What is the value? Let's imagine that you know of somebody like that where they live in that world where they're the sinner and they're never going to be good enough no matter what they do. So from that perspective, the payoff is uh, they're right, uh, I am lower, and by acknowledging that, then maybe I will be loved enough. Maybe I will be accepted and approved because I'm acknowledging and accepting that as a, as a truth. So that's an example of a payoff. 
It's a negative path. Let's use another example. How many of you know somebody that's in an abusive relationship, right? Literally, where people, you know, their, their spouse is literally massively verbally abusive or physically abusive, and yet the person stays in a relationship. And you tell them all the common sense things to leave it. You even offer to give them a place to stay, offer to give them money, show them where the, the shelters are, and yet they stay. What is the payoff? You see, we all have our own version of that. We watch that. We say, well, they're so stupid. Why don't they leave? You know, what's wrong with these people? But we have payoffs too. Our payoffs are allowing ourselves to put ourselves down, to feel guilty, uh, to receive information negatively. There's a payoff. I promise you. What's the payoff for the person that's in, uh, in an abusive relationship that stays? What's their payoff? Their payoff is... At a subconscious level, at a level when they were uh, uh, young, they somehow adopted a belief. Maybe they were eight or nine years old and they said, well, it's better to be in this relationship with my abusive father than to have no place to go. Maybe that's what was taught them. Maybe the abusive person in their life that taught them it was okay to be in that kind of relationship later on in life said, you're never going to find anything better than me. You don't know what that subconscious programming was. But somewhere along the line, our little child accepted a belief. What is the payoff? So I asked this person when I was working with them last week, I said, you need to ask yourself this question. What is the payoff of ex of of receiving this information in this way. And it makes your brain spin because it forces you to think outside of the box. And what typically happens is most of us have difficulty um, even going there. We have difficulty asking that hard question, let alone getting to the root of it. Guess who knows the answer? Your soul. Your soul absolutely knows the answer. Your heaven's team knows the answer. <clears throat> karma brings these kinds of conditions to us. Think about it. If you're a person that uh, uh, subconsciously um, receives things as if somebody's picking on you, as if somebody's saying negative things to you, as if you did something wrong, uh, guilty, whatever it might be, if that's the kind of personality that you have uh, built into your life, what's the payoff? Does it bring you attention? Does it bring you... Um, Negative attention, right? Oh, you're just this, this, and that worry work. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, it's attention. It's negative attention, but it's attention. Certainly a two or three-year-old might learn that one, right? Um, why do the two and three-year-olds scream and yell, you know, right? Negative attention. We adopt these patterns and we bring them forth into our adulthood. What is the payoff? What is the payoff? Unfortunately, our mind is patterned and it's very difficult to hear the answer. Uh, so how do we get the answer then? We have to ask our soul and our heavens team to guide us. We also need to do a forgiveness around it. There's two parts to it. Why do we do forgiveness around guilting ourselves, receiving things as negative? Because at least according to the wisdom that I've chosen to accept as, as validating and true, you may or may not choose to accept it, that everything has a root cause. And that root cause is a good karma or a not so good karma, right? We've either done good things and now have a wonderful life without these kinds of, of emotional conditions in our life, or we've done some unpleasant things and then we have a lot of problems in our life. Very, very simple. Karma. Okay? So if we are riding around town, uh, riding around life, in a place of negative self-talk, uh, putting ourselves down, receiving information negatively, wondering why we're always insufficient, and unworthy, blah, blah, blah. The karma is that it's reasonable and possible that in a previous time, a beautiful soul that you're not today, you're a much more beautiful soul today than you could have been in previous times. We tend to be better and better as times go by. Uh, you or your ancestors may have made some significant mistakes in which there could, could have been very derogatory communication to others. 
There even could have, maybe it was one of those times back in the early days when they were uh, doing a, a great deal of uh, derogatory communication with religious teachings, right? You know, heavy, heavy sinner stuff, making people feel extremely guilty and extremely unworthy. That, that definitely creates karma. Uh, it could have been where you were a, a very unpleasant boss, creating very unpleasant communication to others, etc. But if we put others down, say unpleasant things, they feel guilty, worthless, da 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 receive things negatively, blah, 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 blah. That is a, could be a predecessor to why you have this in your life today. This is why we need to do forgiveness practices. So welcome Zilke, welcome M.A. Drade, welcome Rosetta, welcome Donna. Brant, um, Pamela, welcome, welcome Lorraine, um, Eva Karif, welcome Eliz Elizabeth, Master Elizabeth, welcome also to Dean Forbes, and if I missed your name, forgive me, welcome, welcome Christina Walker. So, I hope you can start to see this pattern, because <clears throat> try to think of it from the biggest picture, okay, at least from what I've come to understand. Our beloved creator is not a bad person. Our beloved creator is not like, I hate you, but I really like you. That's like saying, um, you're good and you're not good. And I'm going to be the judge and the jury. Okay, Everyone has this judge jury thing. Creator, from what I've come to understand, is perfect love. And we all came from that same perfect love, given choice and given free will. And in this choice and in this free will, we... Uh, make many, many choices in alignment with love. This creates good karma, good virtue. And in some cases, we have made unpleasant choices out of alignment with love, creating imbalances, creating karmic conditions, if you will. Those karmic conditions could create a life in which we grow up with abusive parents or uh, abusive people that enter our life and create these negative uh, underlying tones in our life. So... If you take a look at it from that biggest perspective, you can start to unwind it permanently. Why live with it? Does anybody really want to live with negative self-talk or guilt or hearing things incorrectly? Anybody? Most of us probably wouldn't want that consciously. <clears throat> Choose instead to recognize there very likely could be a precursor that has led the, these kinds of emotions to you. And do forgiveness around it. Very easy. What do I ask forgiveness for? for bringing these kinds of emotional sufferings upon others, if you or your ancestors ever would have done that. Because you know how much it sucks for you, right? So you ask forgiveness how, you know, if, if others have suffered the way you have, have received information from a guilt place or a, a unworthy place, etc., etc., then deeply and sincerely apologize for having brought those kinds of conditions upon others through inappropriate thoughts, words, or actions. The second part is you ask the question, what is the payoff? That's the physical world thing, okay? Because now you need to uproot this. There's two ways to uproot it. You do the forgiveness practice, which, uh, if done authentically, literally is like erasing the karmic debt because many of those souls that have been harmed, they would be more than happy to release you of the spiritual debt if you just woke up to what happened. And so you ask forgiveness, and they release you from these spiritual debts. Welcome, Carl. And all of a sudden, you start receiving information differently, a little more positively. And all of a sudden, you start being less, uh, um, uh, putting yourself down. Your, your self-worth starts increasing. Your self-respect starts to increase. Your agreements to not let other people trample on you starts to increase. Why? Because the karma is being weaned away by your... Uh, purposeful thoughts, words, and actions, your forgiveness practices and whatnot. But also, <clears throat> when you start doing these practices, it releases the mind blockages so that when you ask the question, what is the payoff, you'll actually start to get answers. You're like, oh, oh, I get it now. Now, there's a trick also that you can use in the meantime. And that trick <clears throat> is that you can ask your soul and your heaven's team to assist you. Because we all have souls and we all have our heaven's team. And they know the answer. They know exactly what the payoff is. They know uh, that when you receive things um, with this negative ear, it allows you to, um, to uh, feel inferior. 
which allows you to stay in the corner and hide and not be seen and not be successful. Okay, that's a simple example. You, you can you can go down a hundred different roads with this, but your your heaven's team and your soul knows this. <laughs> they know what the root of it is. There's a fear of success, for example. So this is a way to accomplish uh, staying in the corner. <clears throat> so there's many 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 different ways that it can show up. This uh, what is the payoff? Okay. But if you ask your heaven's team, dear the, my soul, my beloved soul, dear my beloved heaven's team, I recognize that I may have created some karmic conditions bringing this upon others in previous times. And, and I will definitely do more forgiveness practice around that because I would not want this kind of suffering to others. I really want to move forward in my life with positivity, receiving messages with a good, clear ear, and not putting myself down anymore and not having self-worth issues, uh, being confident in my own abilities. And what I would like, Heaven, is when I catch um, these automatic conditions, when I catch myself uh, hearing something and I know that I'm hearing it negatively and they're saying something positive, or I know I'm judging myself and I maybe should not be, when I catch myself doing this, my beloved soul, my Heaven's team, could you please tell me what the root cause is now you might have to tell me my beloved heaven see my soul when i least expect it when i'm quiet maybe when i wake up from sleep in the morning or some other time but please give me the answer i would be so grateful because what happens is when our mind is busy it's hard to receive the guidance and the, the purity of, of what can assist us you'll be shocked You're, this works no matter what Please don't limit yourself to this example. Your soul and your heaven's team, they can give you some awesome answers very quickly. The reason we can't hear it is because our mind's far too busy. So when we're, our mind is very busy, we cannot receive these messages. <clears throat> we have to keep our mind open to receive messages from our heaven's team, from our soul. And uh, they know when your mind is uncluttered, uh, and they'll send you that message at that time. And you'll be like, ding! You know, you ever hear that in your head? Ding! Oh, that's the answer. That does happen for us. And it'll be very similar. But you'd have to ask. Okay? It's the same thing. If you've ever lost anything, try it. Dear my soul, dear my heaven's team, could you please tell me where I left that? Da, 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 da. I haven't been able to find it in a month now. Uh, please tell me when I'm, when I'm silent and I'm not paying attention, when I can receive your message. Thank you. <clears throat> then you go about your business and you'll find one moment you're in a meditation and ding, oh, there it is. You see a picture of where it's at or something like that. So your team can absolutely guide you and, and give you these answers. You just have to be open to receiving. So the two-way path of clearing this, you ask forgiveness and then you also uh, uh, work with the best conditions you have. Now I see a, a comment that says, uh, have difficulty believing with karma from previous uh, lifetimes, kind of like being born a sinner. Okay, don't. Um, but you probably recognize that um, our thoughts, words, and actions from this life experience does impact us positively or negatively moving forward. And uh, for those that um, have a belief in um, the sins of the father are visited upon the son, that's a Christian teaching. It's kind of like saying the ancestral stuff impacts us. And um, I had trouble with that one too, but I, I'm, I'm fully on board with that now after witnessing 10 years of validation from that. <clears throat> but it takes everybody a process. Yeah, we all go through our own processes. Regardless, even if you just came at this from the psychological perspective, there's always a payoff. Always. The key is to look for what it is. Okay? So we're going to go through uh, forgiveness practice right now. And then... You can ask what a payoff is. You can think about the last time <clears throat> that you maybe put yourself down. Maybe that's an easy one to find for you. Last time you felt uh, unworthy. You know, try to identify when that was last. Um, maybe somebody saying something to you and you received it as a slam and that was not their intention. Okay, think about that. <clears throat> Um, you know, they might have been even, you might have yelled back at him like, what? I don't even know what I said. You know, that happens sometimes. And so find one of those and then we're going to go into a practice with that. Okay, choose one. I'll give you 30 seconds to find one. I'll just be quiet.
that's a tough one. Um, sometimes you just have to do like soul readings or ask ask their soul to give guidance, Donna. <clears throat> These children, just like you, you know, accepted a certain belief systems, um, and sometimes you have to, you know, the ten year olds especially, they're really sharp. You have to kind of help them to question it. They're they're more than willing to probably go down that road if you guide them in a positive way. <clears throat> okay, so choose your um, last time that you. Receive something negative. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Let's do this uh, practice. We start by a forgiveness practice. Placing your hands in soul light, soul service hand position. Just like a prayer position, we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. Right hand remains pointed towards heaven. It's a hand mudra position. Connects heaven to our heart. Close your eyes and let us connect. First, we offer gratitude. Dear my beloved soul. You can repeat if you'd like. Dear my beloved Heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints. Dear my beloved creator, God, Tao, source, whatever your creator is, you connect. I love you. I really, really love you, honor you, and deeply appreciate you. I thank you for all of the wisdom you've brought to me in this and all time. I thank you for all the guidance and the blessings you have showered upon me in this and all time. <clears throat> I thank you for everything that you've done for me. You may have saved my life many times, and I am unaware of it. You may have guided me away from danger many times, and I have not offered my gratitude and appreciation. I thank you from my heart and soul for all that you have done for me, seen and unseen. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I ask most humbly and most sincerely, for forgiveness to all souls of humanity, all souls in all time. If I or my ancestors have offered inappropriate or wrong thoughts, words, or actions that have brought physical harm to you, emotional suffering, or mental suffering or imbalance. If I or my ancestors have communicated in such a way that the end result was you feeling inferior, less than, unworthy. If I or my ancestors have communicated in you in such a way where you felt guilty and insufficient, unsuccessful, a failure, or anything negative. If I or my ancestors purposefully communicated with you in a negative tone to create negative experiences by thought, word, or action. There is truly no excuse. I sincerely apologize and ask for forgiveness. I ask most humbly for your forgiveness. And I recognize that simply to ask for forgiveness is by itself not enough. That I must change and do my best to help others to be happy and healthier and not make the same mistakes again. I will do better. I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to receive your forgiveness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> and now we must apologize, excuse me, offer forgiveness, offer forgiveness, which is really hard for some people, to all those that have communicated with us in these same manners. Because it's like a rat wheel. If we don't offer forgiveness and ask for forgiveness, we'll just keep experiencing the same things. So we offer forgiveness. So continue to repeat if it's comfortable. Dear all souls, in this and all time, <clears throat> if you have communicated to me derogatorily, negatively, put me down, said that I was not enough, insufficient, that I was not worthy not worthy in love, not worthy in physical uh, power, not worthy in emotional intelligence, not worthy in mental intelligence, or any other form of communication where I was belittled and put down by you. If this has happened by you or your ancestors in any lifetime, I wish to release you fully and completely of any spiritual debt that you owe me for this unpleasant form of communication. 
I do not wish to be someone who is this way towards you to balance that debt. I wish to release you of this karmic experience and release myself. I forgive you, you forgive me. Let us all move forward in love, peace, and harmony. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a very simple practice, but a very powerful practice. <clears throat> now, think of that uh, last event where something was said to you and you received it in a manner that could have been received much, much better, or you put yourself down, or you received it as negative. Whatever that event was, think of that now. Maybe receive something incorrectly. It was not meant the way it was received. Maybe you found yourself feeling very, very guilty. Maybe you found yourself cowering in a corner, uh, emotionally, mentally speaking, whatever it was. And continue to repeat. Dear my soul, dear the soul of my heaven's teams, I love you, honor you, truly appreciate you. I wish to permanently resolve these and mental emotional blockages so that I can be confident so that I can receive positive information with positive ears so that I do not put myself down and do not limit my abilities to be of the greatest value in this life I ask you most humbly my soul and my heavens team could you please tell me what is the payoff for this last time when I reacted in this way? So think about that moment and then just be quiet. I'm going to be quiet for a little while and just see if you get an answer. You may get one, you may not. What is the payoff? What do I get out of it by responding this way? Receive the answer. <clears throat> Let your mind go. What is the end result? Some value was gained. What value was gained? <clears throat> now for probably half of us, we'll get a mind-based answer. Which is okay. It's a good start. It's typically topical. And um, there needs to be a layering, a leveling down. Let's say you got a mind-based answer that says, it makes me feel right. Okay? It would be a mind-based answer. Well, I did that because I can be right. I did that because I'm protecting myself. This is a very short, simple mind-based answer. Okay? It's a good start. What's the payoff of being right? What's the payoff of being right? What's the payoff of this answer? So whatever your answer is, go deeper. Okay, great. But why? Why is that important to me? What value do I get out of that? When you're able to level down as to the root cause, you can then address it using the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us. Typically, you'll have to, uh, especially if you're, you haven't done this very often, you'll have to wait till your soul gives you the guidance or your heaven's team. Or you sit in meditation and you get clear on it. 
and then you'll get right to the roots very clear that root could most likely be as a child you accepted a truth that for that child was protectionistic it was designed and purposeful to protect them uh, from losing love from um, being accepted uh, a loss of being accepted from gaining approval <clears throat> there's always something gained right there's always a value out of it a fear of loss of love okay you don't lose love by being in an abusive relationship you don't lose love right weird thinking but this is what's adopted as a child we have to let go of how the mind thinks and go to what the child might adopt when you find that root you simply address it directly your child your six seven eight nine year old child in this example <clears throat> has that uh, belief and they're still bringing it forward you're 27 30 40 years old and it still pops up instantly as a default you have to literally heal it right there at that six seven eight year old child Excuse me. and you do that by acknowledging it dear the soul of my beloved child who adopted this uh, protection response I love you that was such a great idea what you did then when we were six years old if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have been protecting from this this and that right it was truly valuable and it's no longer necessary I have adopted different understandings now and this kind of a belief no longer serves me but I love you so much for protecting me all this time thank you so much for this amazing service <clears throat> so now in the future though whenever anybody says something like this or whenever this and this and this happens it's no longer necessary for you to come up you're you have a beautiful soul and your service is complete okay from now on I'm going to think this positive I'm going to think this positive I'm going to think you basically you're you, you know we might look at this like well that's kind of hokey right you're talking to your your inner child who who you're 30 years away from now really okay well how hokey is it that that six-year-old inner child impacted you now at thir age 34 to be in this negative place in this self defaming place it's equally hokey guys okay that power has impacted you now at age 34 age 43 whatever your age is so you have to address it at the root you have to unwind that subconscious pattern <clears throat> and you do that by asking the question what is the payoff where is the source of this what is my return what value do I get out of making this choice usually like I said it boils back to a protectionistic measure uh, to ensure that you get something or to ensure that you don't get something doesn't happen to you and it doesn't always make sense on to the logical mind which is why the mind usually can't find it right away okay so this is how you get to it and once you're there you give it love remember everything has a soul does your six-year-old have a soul your six-year-old uh, inner child does that thought have a soul everything has a soul what's the purpose of every soul the purpose of every soul is to serve so that service is present in that moment it's trying to serve us <clears throat> it's been trying to serve us for the last 30 years but we've been ignoring it now we can give it love we can tell it its service is complete it can now go back and be a happy little child you can actually and it's there are many practices that do this including what's called the Sedona method that teaches you to rewrite the script right there for that six-year-old you can you can replay when that child uh, adopted that unpleasant belief system and you can literally rewrite it right there you can teach her how to respond differently right there in that moment instead of running off in a protectionistic manner taking it personally you teach them to stand up for themselves be strong right rewrite the script <clears throat> this is uh, very doable and it's all happening at the level of soul remember your soul is the recorder it's like a tape recorder a CD recorder you know a digital mp3 recorder uh, your soul is your own Akashic record and when you go back and you communicate with it you are clearing that karma so to speak that was created uh, by previous experiences as we've been talking about but that's how it came forth and manifested in this lifetime so you address it by doing the forgiveness practice then you go back to it and you unwind at the level of soul that blockage
okay? Rewrite that script, and what does it do? It literally shines a light into your next 30, 40 years and unwinds those kinds of patterns. It brings you forward to where next time when somebody says something positive to you or something that you might receive as inferior, causing inferiority complex, blah, 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 <clears throat> you could find yourself responding quite differently because you went through some of these steps. So in a nutshell, what I said to this friend that triggered this wisdom here today was each and every time you catch yourself negative self-talking, putting yourself down, uh, cowering, going away from the direction you know you truly consciously want to go to, receiving a positive negative mess, uh, negatively, guilt, anytime you go down that road whatsoever, ask yourself, what is the payoff? Some that there's a value here that is unconscious that I'm not paying attention here. And when you consistently do that, every time you catch yourself on one of these payoff moments, you will completely change your future. There's not a point, there's not a single thing in your future that can't positively change when you start identifying these because it's the negative payoffs that puts you in this perennial cycle that's not serving you uh, moving forward. I don't know of anybody who really truly wants to stay in a place of, of, of self-worth issues and guilt issues, any of that. I, I, I don't think anybody wants to stay there. This is the soul way process to get to it uh, isolated and uprooted. <clears throat> and if the mind can't isolate it, which is going to happen at least half the time, you ask your soul and your heavens team to assist you, to give you that wisdom when you're not expecting it, when you're quiet and, uh, and silent. And your soul and your heavens team will. Um, just keep doing it. You'll be very surprised. Okay. So I hope this wisdom helps each and every one of you today. Some of you came in late. Uh, I haven't uh, had a chance to acknowledge all of you. Please forgive me. Welcome, Amy. Welcome, Lolly. Welcome also to uh, Ingeborg. Uh, welcome also to Joy Weber and Penelope. If you missed uh, the first part of this, I do encourage you to go back <coughs> and watch it. Um, my next live stream is going to be on Thursday, three hours earlier than when this one started. So this started at noon Hawaii time. It will start at 9 Hawaii time on Thursday. And I haven't picked the subject matter yet. And I encourage you to join me on Thursday. And then also I want to give you a, a pre-warning. In approximately four to five weeks, I'll be revealing a program. I believe I'm going to start May, May 13, uh, I think is the date I decided. I'm going to be doing a 52-week self-healing program. So if you have any uh, issues, be it physical issues, emotional issues, mental blockages, relationship blockages, these can be self-healed. And I'm going to be doing a literally a 52-week program where I'll be working through each and every one of Master Shah's wisdom in his books, applying the very, uh, very many different um, approaches to self-healing. Okay? And we're going to be working with them individually, one-on-one, -on -one and together. Um, so I will be revealing that hopefully within the next week or so, and you can start signing up for that. <clears throat> the good news is... Um, Anyone can step in at any time. So you might be in the program two or three months and be getting some wonderful results and you're telling your best friend about it. And they can step in and will have not missed the thing because each class does not depend on the other. Each class is a standalone class that will serve you to self-heal. I've made it extremely affordable. Okay, That's the purpose of it. <clears throat> I wanted to make it extremely affordable so we can get 100 people if possible. I'm happy if we have 100 people. That'd be great. Um, the purpose is to help everybody to be able to self-heal, okay? And uh, so I look forward to serving you with that. Keep an eye out for that. Also, uh, not too far future, I'll be revealing a cancer self-healing program, and that will be uh, dedicated for anyone that has those kinds of conditions. I already have quite a bit of that set up, but I'm not ready to release it quite yet. So you can look forward to these programs. I will be redoing the Open Spiritual Channels program. We're just wrapping up this one. It's a 12-week program. If you would like to further develop your Open Spiritual Channels, further develop your ability to hear heaven, your ability to see heaven, your ability to uh, uh, translate heaven's messages, okay, uh, then that 12-week program will be something you're going to want to look forward to, okay? So that's coming up within the next uh, three, four, five weeks. And I look forward to serving you. You can contact me through Facebook Messenger uh, for individual services, soul readings, healings, uh, uh, anything of that nature. I'm happy to serve you. 
So thank you, thank you, thank you to all the beings of light, divine Tao and Source, Master Shah, Master Shah's original soul, uh, Mother Earth, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, our heavens team, and our own soul. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Hi, Alona. Thank you, Spasia. Bye-bye, everybody.